Hey everyone, welcome to Bright Eyes. This is an acrylic painting class. I am so excited to paint with you today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Before we get started, I am going to go over supplies briefly. Um, feel free, as with any painting that I do, to use the colors that you have. Um, feel free to change them up based on, you know, your own preferences and what you like. Um, but here are the colors I'm going to use. Uh, today I've got black. I've got light green permanent, which is just a nice bright green, a grassy green. I've got magenta. I've got raw sienna. I've got cadmium orange. I've got white. I've got dioxazine purple. I've got burnt sienna and cad yellow deep. Um, so as far as the browns go, raw sienna and burnt sienna, um, raw sienna has more of a yellow tint to it. Burnt sienna has more of a reddish tint to it. But uh, really for this, any two colors of brown would be absolutely fine. Um, we're using those for the tree and the owl. And um, I will be painting on a nice big 16 by 20 canvas. Um, when you signed up, you should have gotten this fun little supply list here that says everything that you need. Um, <clears throat> so those are the colors. You also need water, paper towels, something to put your paint on. Um, the transfer was provided, and so you can do this on an 8x10 uh, all the way up to a 9x12, or the largest size here is 16x20. Um, paint brushes just have a variety of sizes. Um, I mainly use a small, medium, and large flat, and a small, medium, and large round. Um, that's all I almost always ever use. Uh, heat gun or hair dryer, I always suggest that just helps speed along the paint process, the drying process, so that we can move through the layers. Um, but that's pretty much it. All you need is the design, a canvas to paint on, uh, and some paint. This is a really fun, cute lesson. Um, I was inspired by uh, my daughter's stuffed animal. She's got a really fun owl with big bright eyes and so that's where the inspiration <clears throat> excuse me from this lesson came from so uh let's get started right um i am going to make my background and uh the colors that i want for my background um, are going to be based in this uh, magenta i want a nice bright pink background um but i'm going to add some color variations to it so First thing I'm going to do is get some magenta on my palette and just scoot that up a bit. Um, next to that, I'm going to get some white and then just a little bit of orange. So magenta, white, and orange. And this is what we're gonna use for our background. Now I am using nice large canvas and I wanna cover um, a lot of this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just adding a little bit of water to my canvas here uh, where my background is going to go. And this is gonna help the paint move smoothly. Now I don't need this sloppy dripping wet um, but I do just want to make it a little easier to move this paint around. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I go all the way up to, if not over some of these trees, so that uh, those get hidden. All right. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by adding some magenta. And by starting off with this, this kind of just helps me visually see where this background is going. So over to the left here, we've got a tree. Um, over here is background. All right. So now we know where all of our paint is going. I'm just 
kind of moving it around here. And actually, I'm going to try to move this up just a little bit. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to swipe in some white. And then I'm going to add in orange here and there. And right now I'm just tapping in color. Once I have quite a bit of paint on here, what I'm going to do is come back and just start moving this up and down, creating variation in this background. And I like to use these clean swoops whenever I can. Just create that directional quality of the background. So I am going over some of these tracer lines because if I don't, I won't be able to get that nice smooth look on the background. So those tracer lines are just there to help us. We only need to see the tiniest bit of them. We don't need to see, um, you know, big dark tracer lines. We just need to be able to find them. All right. So once you have your background, um, don't over blend it. So take a look at this as a whole. And wherever you feel like you might need more patches of darker color, just go ahead and blend some of those in. Um, we don't want this to be the same everywhere. We want different, different patches of color of different areas of light and dark. So it's okay to come back in and just play with it a little bit. So that is our nice, bright background. Um, and certainly you can do your background in any color you want. I like this nice, bright pink, bright magenta. I love seeing all the different paint strokes. So um, that's the background. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do um, is we are going to work on this tree branch. And the reason why I do the tree branch next is because it is a nice, large sweeping motion again. So I'm going to get my two browns. I've got uh, my burnt sienna and my raw sienna. And I'm also going to get some black on my palette. Just a little bit there. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my nice big brush, I'm gonna clean it off because I don't want any pink in my tree.
All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this darker brown, which is my burnt sienna, and I am going to fill in and completely cover the background of this tree. So both the tree trunk and the limb that little birdie or little owl is sitting on here. So just filling in this color. Over here, we've got some flowers. Um, you don't have to worry too much about those shapes, but um, I don't want to remember where they are. And then my tree trunk here really is just kind of wavy, so don't stress too much about that. Um, the only thing to consider is we want the bottom of the trunk to appear larger than the top. So. I'm just switching to a smaller brush as I work down the branch here. And we've got some little owl feet that go on the branch, but I can certainly draw those in later. All right, so we are just filling in that color We're going to want that to dry a little bit. Now I'm going to get a round brush and up here towards the top, I am just going to draw in a few little branches that come off there. You can even do you know, one or two little ones off the larger branch here. All right, while I've got this uh, uh, burnt sienna out, I am also gonna start filling in parts of my little owl. So the parts I wanna fill in are the wings on the side. And then up here at the top. Um, so for now, these are just flat color. I'm just going to paint that on. And I'm using my round brush because that helps me get those nice points on the feathers there.
Again, remember, we're just adding down kind of this first layer of colors. So don't be too hard on yourself as far as the shape goes, because we are going to put some things up on top and um, that'll become a little easier as we go. We're just getting some color in there. And then while I've got this uh, brown out, I'm going to add a smidge of black to this brown here. So uh, burnt sienna mixed with black. We're just going to get a nice uh, deep color of brown. And I'm going to paint in his little feet. If you lost those tracer lines, it's really just three little toes on each foot. All right, so what I'm gonna do next, I do want some of these layers to be dry. So I am going to uh, use my heat gun, my hair dryer, and just dry some of this up. If you don't have a heat gun or a hair dryer available, just take a piece of paper. You can even take your supply list and just gently move the air over your piece and that will help it dry fairly quickly. It usually does not take acrylic very long to dry. So bear with me just a moment. It's not completely dry, but it's dry enough to move on to the next step. So um, we're going to add some texture into this tree. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my flat brush ready, nice and cleaned off. But I'm going to use this round. It's already kind of dirty. Um, I'm going to grab some black. I'm going to add some streaks up this tree and down this branch. Then I'm going to dip into burnt sienna and I'm going to add some more streaks in there. I'm going to dip into the raw sienna, which is a much lighter color here. And just kind of add some chunks in there. All right, now what I'm gonna do is dip my brush in the darker color, my burnt sienna, and I'm just gonna start uh, using long strokes to kind of brush this out a little bit. And what's gonna end up happening is we're just gonna get variations in this tree. Oops. I've got a big chunk of black there, so I can add you know, maybe some other colors to tone that down a bit.
and there's no right or wrong, right? We're just going for just a little bit of, you know, difference in the shades, difference in the colors. We want a little bit of that lighter color, a little bit of that darker color. Just want it to look a little more like wood. So we're just brushing out a few different colors of brown and it gives it that nice tree appearance. And don't overthink it. Your eye just looks for differences in color. brush for the next step um, because we're going to continue using browns and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my burnt sienna which is the color we used on this owl on the darker areas so I'm going to get this color again so this time um, I'm going to add a pinch of white to it we're just going to lighten it just a bit So you can see the difference in that, that shade there. I can even lighten it a little more. Um, there's no right or wrong, but don't go too light because we are adding another layer here. So this lighter brown is going on my owl's belly. And you want to make sure that you mix up enough because this is always also going to be her eyebrows, which we're going to do in a later step. But right now I'm just filling in this big round belly of hers. Big floofy belly. I actually saw something today on the internet um, that showed... Uh, a cross-section drawing of an owl and that its body is like 80% feathers and 20% like actual owl, actual body. So when you look at the owl, it looks so big and floofy, but they're actually super small inside this layer of feathers. And this is just a coverage layer, so I'm not overthinking it, but I do want my edges to be nice and clean. All right, so there's Miss, Miss Owl's belly there. And there we go. Make sure you have some more of this color. We are gonna use more. Um, but now what I want you to do um, is use that dirty brush and mix up that dirty brush into white. And we're gonna create a third color, which is much, much lighter. Um, just to show you the difference here. This one is gonna be almost, almost white. It's gonna be like a cream is what we're going for. So compared to what we have here, this is nice and creamy. have enough so I'm going to make just a little bit more of this creamy light color. All right so for this cream color we are going to do this area up here around the owl's eyes. Um, and while we do this, um, this is going to be our top layer. So um, our almost top layer. So I do want the edges to be nice and clean. So I'm going to put down 
some paint on here and then I am going to come back and get a small brush to help move this out where I want it. All right, now while this is wet, I am going to dip into one or two of my other browns, and I am just going to swirl in just a bit of this color. I'm lightly applying just pinches of it. It doesn't matter what brown you use, as long as it's just a little different. You know, choose one of the colors that we had mixed up previously. Just add a little bit in there. And then just swirl it out a little bit. I like to see the brush strokes. I think it, it definitely gives it that uh, owly, feathery texture. So don't overthink that. It's okay to have, have lines and brush strokes, okay? All right, now I mentioned we're going back to uh, that, this brown right here, this eyebrow color. And so I'm gonna grab my round brush and up here at the tippy top, um, I am going to just make some quick brush strokes. Um, one, two, three. And we're just going to start adding in some furry eyebrows. Up there. You can even mix in a little bit darker brown, but we, we definitely want to accent those eyebrows. All right, while we were working on this, this belly has started to dry, which is kind of what we wanted to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a paintbrush and I want this paintbrush to be dry. I'm not gonna dip it in water. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little more white to my lightest color, the one we used here around the eyes. Make sure I just have enough of that that paint, that night, nice light cream color. I'm gonna put some on my brush and then I'm gonna wipe it off. And what I'm gonna do down here is I am going to dry brush some of this color in. So I'm gonna add some onto my brush and I just want it to be really light, really dry. Um, a little bit of that paint might mix in and blend, but we're just gonna add layers of this light color 
in this dry brush technique. And it's going to feel like the paint is sticking, like it's resisting. That's what we want. That's, that's dry brush. And as I run out of paint here, I'm just adding more white to the mix. I'm just layering on those feathery layers right here on the belly. And when I'm satisfied with the texture, with what I've got going down here, I'm just going to gently pull upwards on the top to allow some of this to meet with the eye area. I don't want that to be such a stark line. And so I'm dry, dry brushing in some of this area up here. I didn't even add any paint to my palette or paint to my brush. I'm just kind of mixing it in. Um, and it's okay that this is a little darker up top because there would naturally be a shadow under that layer. Um, and you can build up this belly as much as you want. I kind of like where it is now. I might add just a little bit of white on the top of it just to brighten it. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this. Right now, I feel like I've got too much paint that I'm not really going to be able to lighten it much more. But we'll see. Yeah, after a while, you get too much paint and it just is difficult to use that dry brush. So in any event, here is that beautiful belly. All right, so now we're going to add some of the color to the eye. And the first color I'm going to use is my Cadmium Yellow Deep. So this is a nice bright yellow. Um, so I'm gonna put it on my palette. I am gonna add a smidge of white to this color because I don't want it to be totally transparent. Um, And then, so I will mix that up, just a pinch of white with that yellow. And that helps the opacity. It's still gonna be a little opaque, but shouldn't be too bad. Now, um, we are doing the outside of this eye here. And I do swing it a little bit on the inside as well.
Now we're going to add like some pretty eyelashes and, and give her some fun little embellishments. But um, I want to lay down this nice bright yellow color first. And then while I have this yellow out, I already have some orange on my palette. I'm going to mix a little orange into this yellow. And we're going to get the color of the beak. And the beak here is a top layer, so I do want to make that somewhat clean. Play with the yellows and the oranges a little bit with uh, when we get to the flowers, but right now we're just filling in some colors on these eyes. So, all right, I've got black on my palette already, and that is the next color that we are going to use for the eyes. And we're going to fill in these round areas here with black. All right, we need to let that black dry. But what I'm going to do is while we're working with black is I'm going to get a small, um, small round brush. I'm going to take a little bit of this black and I'm just going to add some, some feathery, fluffy movement up top here. And while I've got my round brush out, my small round, I am going to go over the top of my eyes um, and create like an eyeliner of sorts up top here. So I'm just going around the edge of this yellow with a nice thick black line. And then once I get about halfway down the eye, I'm just going to flick up some little swoops for some eyelashes. And then of course, what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. Be careful if you're leaning across your painting, just make sure that it's dry.
All right, we're gonna let this dry. Um, I want my black to be completely dry before I add in the glimmer to the eyes. Um, so now I'm gonna switch gears and we're gonna go into the, the flowers and the leaves. So the first color I'm gonna pull out is my light green permanent. And I'm really not gonna change this color much. Um, but I want to get a small to medium size round. Oh, my brushes are messy, so let's see what we got in here. All right, so small to medium size round here. And um, I'm going to dip right into this green color. And then so we've got a flower, a few flowers, but next to the flowers, we've got green leaves. And I'm going to do these leaves first. And I'm just filling in this color. And we'll come back and accent the leaves. But we've got two here at the base of these flowers. Down here at the by the bottom of the tree. And then two here up at the top. And then up here by Miss Owl's head, we've got some leaves as well. So You can certainly add extra leaves if you want to. But these just kind of go next to the flowers. Give them a little fun touch. All right, now I'm going to get the colors set out for my flowers. And for that, I'm going to use the same round brush. Um, but I'm going to want some magenta. I'm gonna want some white. I'm gonna want some yellow and some orange. And a little bit of that dioxazine purple. I don't need a lot of that purple. It's gonna go um, in those pink flowers and just kind of shake up that color a little bit. So I'm gonna have, um, on the top here, I want two yellow flowers or two yellowish orange flowers in the background and a, a pink flower on top. Down here, my pink flower is going to be in the background and my yellowy orange flowers are going to be on top. So I'm going to start by adding magenta, pure magenta to this circle here because this flower is going to be in the back. So I'm going to do that first. I am just filling in that circle. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I don't need to clean off my brush. I'm going to take the brush, might wipe it a little bit, but I don't need to wash it. I'm going to take this dioxazine. I'm going to dab a little bit in the center. And then I'm just going to make some strokes moving outwards with that dioxazine purple. Wipe off my brush, don't need to wash it. Then I'm gonna dip into white. Now with this white, um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right in the center and I'm just gonna swirl this out. Wipe off my brush and then I'm gonna come back through and I'm gonna add petals 
of white in this flower. And I'm just alternating short, quick little strokes. All right. So that is my farthest back flower down here. Now I'm going to do my two orange flowers up top because they are going to be the farthest back on the top. So we're going to do a similar process. I'm going to take this, um, well, yellow. All right. And I'm going to fill in these two circles with yellow. And again, don't be afraid to add a little bit of white to it. Uh, that's going to help with the opacity a little bit. So I've got my two yellow flowers up there. Wipe off my brush, don't need to clean it. I'm gonna dip into this orange. Again, I'm gonna start with the darkest area in the center and then I'm gonna swirl a little bit of that out. darkest area in the center and then just swirl a little bit of that color out. Wipe off my brush, not cleaning it. I'm going to dip into the white. I'm going to start in the very center and I'm just going to spiral this out. I'm going to wipe it off and do the same thing for the other flower. Put it in the center and just spiral that color out. And that just blends it a little bit. Wipe that off. And now I'm going to come through with some white and just accentuate these petals with a few more white petals. Just working those outward. All right, I'm gonna stop for a moment and I am gonna dry these flowers just a little bit. They don't need to be totally dry, but I don't want too much of this pink to get mixed in. dry there. And I'm going to repeat the same process down here with these two yellow flowers. I really didn't even need to wash off my brush, but I just threw it in the water. All right. So again, starting this background of the flower with yellow, just filling in the circle with that yellow. Once you've got your nice two bright yellows, offload that brush a little bit. Then we're going to dip into our orange, orange centers. And we're just going to brush some of that orange out.
wipe off that brush. The reason why we wipe off is because we don't want too much of the color we just used um, to, to move forward. Um, so dip in white. Again, we're going to spiral. And then just blend some of that color away from the center there. And then we're going to add in some white petals. And then we're going to go back to a magenta flower on the top. So once again, filling in the circle with magenta. And this is a top flower, so we're going right over those yellows. All right. Wipe our brush off. And we're going to tap purple in the center. And brush some, moving outwards. Wipe off that brush. Dip it in white. And then we're going to do our spiral. Wipe off that brush. And then we're going to add in more petals. And those are our flowers. We're getting close to the end. We're going to do some finishing touches. So I'm going to get a nice small brush, small round, and I'm going to add a little bit of fun on her little feet. So maybe I'll dip in a little yellow and pull some yellow into those feet. Maybe even just a little highlight. As far as this beat goes, I'm going to dip into some orange and just add some nice bright orange in there and just brighten that up a little bit. Dip into some white and maybe just add a little curve on beak. brush. I'm just going to come up here and add a few little furry tufts of white up here. And then I'm also going to add a few of those in the eyebrows just for fun. And then my black should be dry now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in two large circles that overlap the black and the yellow. So one on each side. And then right underneath those, I'm going to add a small white circle in the black part. And that just gives her a little sparkle to her eye there. And the last thing I'm going to do is just add a little more zhuzh on these uh, leaves. 
So cleaning off my brush, I'm going to use a round. Um, and what I'm going to do for this is get a little bit of yellow on my palette. And then I'm going to dip in the green, get my brush nice and saturated in green. Uh, and then I'm going to tap into the yellow. So I have just mostly green, but a little bit of yellow on that brush. And I'm just going to kind of work work this on the top there. So mostly green, a little bit of yellow, and then just adding a little swishes here and there on the top of these leaves. You can always mix in a little more yellow if you don't have enough. Just changing up the color a little bit. And this is one of those paintings where you want to see the brush stroke. So get some of that yellowy green on the top. I don't need to refill in every little space. It's just enough to add a little punch. Then I'm going to dip in white and maybe give these leaves some highlights. If it mixes in with the green and yellow, so be it. That's fine. Just adding a little fun onto those leaves. And that is it, my friends. That is Bright Eyes. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I would love it if you would share your work with me. You can always tag that at Paint, Rinse, Repeat on socials, um, especially on Facebook. Um, if you would like to share in our group, um, our group is at www.facebook.com slash groups slash paints, rinse, paint, rinse, repeat. And that's where you can share all of the artwork you create with me and your original designs. I would love to see it all. Um, so please feel free to join that group and share with us. And then as always, shout out to my supporters who make everything happen. Um, supporters get all my classes included uh, for $4.99 a month. So um, what that is, is a Facebook subscription. And through that subscription, I provide all the links and supply lists for every class that I schedule online. Um, it's only $4.99 for the membership. It's a super great deal. It's cheaper than just taking one class with me. So I encourage you to check that out. And if you have any questions at all or need anything from me, my email is Tara at paint rinserepeat.com. Um, so once again, thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait to see your version and I'll see you next time. Stay creative, art friends.